it's Christmas, <laughs> and I'm gonna show up at my friend's place here, <laughs> and we're gonna have a party. Yeah, we are. Come on. Hey, 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 Merry Christmas. How you doing? Oh, oh. What the hell, man? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, you must have missed me. Wow, well, uh, Jesus. Ho ho ho! Oh! Ho 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 ho! Ho ho ho! They're gonna be surprised. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. I don't know if there'll be snow and have a cup of cheer. Hey, what you doing, guys? <laughs> Bruce, what are you doing here? It's 1 a.m. But I got Twister! Yeah, I got Twister! <laughs> I got Twister! Come on, let's yeah, play! No. I don't know. He's your uncle. Yeah, but he's not. Oh. I guess we're working tonight. Ugh. Well, we may as well roll the opening credits. Hey, what do you got here anyway? Oh man, look at this. It's actually not bad at all. What the heck is he doing in there? What's that racket? Uh, we got some vodka. We got some uh, creme de cacao. We got some rum. Rum's always good at Christmas. Yeah. Oh, Goldschlager. Yeah, we could do something with that. Let's have a drink. First thing I want to say is thanks so much, guys, for inviting me over. <laughs> Look alive. I raided your cabinet because, well, I want to make you drinks. It's Christmas, right? Uh, and this is what I found. I found uh, creme de cacao, uh, white, goldschlager, with a little gold flex, yeah, a little cinnamon flavor there, and uh, Smirnoff uh, vanilla vodka. How long have you had this kicking around? It's kind of bringing a bell of candy cane ingredients, you know? So if we only had some candy canes. You got some candy canes in the house, Viv? Uh, we... Oh, actually, we have the ones on the tree. You can use those, I guess. Ah, okay. So let's grab a candy cane from the tree and smash it. Wait, actually here. Let's pop her in the inner end. Oh yeah, yeah, smash her up good. All right, let's grab another one. That guy right there. Uh, this may take a while. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is prep our glass, okay guys? Um, what should we dip it in? Mm. How about some uh, 
creme de cacao. So we get a little chocolate mint thing going on on the lip. Just uh, get in there. Dip, 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 dip. That's nice. Ooh, yeah. I'm just gonna do half the glass. That way you get a choice whether or not you want candy cane all the way through. Oh yeah, there it is. Nice, there it is. Glass is prepped. Okay, let's clear our area and um, make a candy cane cocktail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a couple more of these candy canes, put them in our glass, yeah. Stop eating my candy canes. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> I'll get you some more. And uh, smash them up. Smash them good. Hmm, how minty do you like it, Viv? Okay, let's grab a couple more. <laughs> They're my candy canes. <laughs> okay, let's throw in some booze. We'll use the vanilla vodka. We're gonna go with two ounces in our glass. Right? A uh, little chocolate. Chocolate and mint always is nice. Uh, so I'm making two drinks here, right? An ounce and a half. 45 mil, and why not a little bit of cinnamon? Hmm. 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 Maybe an ounce, 30 mil, just to give a little bit of a kick there, yeah. <laughs> Some cream. We're gonna go with two ounces of half and half, 60 mil. Okay, we're gonna throw in some ice. Yeah, a little bit of ice. Pop a lid on and shake it. <laughs> oh, just shake it, it's too late for this. Okay. Shake it. Shake it good, shake it like Christmas is right around the corner. Yeah. Again, I'm so happy you invited me, guys. Okay. Nice. And we're just gonna fine strain it into our prepped glasses. Ooh, pink. Isn't that beautiful? Everything is beautiful in its own way. There we go. Candy cane cocktails. <laughs> when was the last time you had a candy cane cocktail? Here you go, Viv. Thanks, Bruce. Hey, you're welcome. Oh, that looks really pretty. Cheers. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, that's actually mm. pretty good. I really like the addition of uh, the Goldschlager in there because quite often you see recipes that don't include it. Why not? <laughs> Cinnamon, mint, chocolate. It's creamy and bright. <laughs> Works for me. Ha! <laughs> Is this for me? Oh, oh. This is such a nice tree. Look at this Ooh, little Santa here, little birdie there. Oh, oh, oh. 
Uh, Brucey, it's getting a little late, no? What are you talking about? <laughs> the night is young. <laughs> I know what we could do. <laughs> we could go, we could go to church. To church? Yeah, church. I know a guy who knows a guy, and yeah, let's go to church. Come on, let's go, come on, let's go. Grab your hat, let's go. I got my coat right here, come on. Santa? Ha, ah, we made it. Oh, that's my friend Brad. Sounding good, Brad. Come on in. Give it a listen. Well, Brad, I'm so happy you allowed me into your world here. Well, it's been great. It's an opportunity for me to share with you. Do you know how long it's been since I've been to church? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of sin to... Uh, well, this is the choir yeah, loft. Yeah, yeah, this is, this okay. is how the devil yeah, gets into yeah, the church. Yeah, awesome. Through the, the choir door. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the organ well, here. Well, right away you probably noticed the keys are backwards. Love them, love yep. them. They're yeah. black instead of white. Why do you think they did that? Because this organ is a, it's not a replica, but it's based on the, the history of an earlier organ than a 20th century organ. So this okay. is at a time before there was ivory. Yes. It's before yes. Columbus discovered the New World even, because oh, really? elephants really? weren't a big thing wow. in Europe, wow. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So then the, uh, the ivory came along once the, yeah. the world yeah. started to yeah. be conquered, yes. right? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so... And, and these, I uh, understand, are called stops. Yes, they're stops. Um, and they, they stop the music. No, no. Stop no. the music, because the original organs played all the time, the, the earliest organs, and uh -huh. you stop the sound. Oh, really? Really? Yes, it makes sense. Okay. It's a little yeah, yeah, backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but they give you different tones, do they not? Right. There's families in here. Okay. We have your flute family. Oh, neat. Very nice. They're like a recorder. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And they take about that much wind, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then the yeah, pipe wakes yeah. up. And here is a, a little, it actually calls it a spindle flute. So that'll be the shape of the pipe. Oh. It's a, almost it's like, two almost. feet, so it goes... 
almost like a piccolo. Almost. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's also a flute. These flutes are made of wood. Yeah. And then there's a family that those pipes up there, they're called principal stops or diapasons. Okay. And they're made of tin and lead. They give you the, the most basic characteristic sound of an organ. Nice. And they really they can be nice. a soul stop too. Set so up. really you've got the whole orchestra here. <laughs> yeah, but it was invented before there was an orchestra even. Oh. So they weren't okay. copies of orchestral instruments okay. other than the recorder, right, I suppose. Right, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me about the, uh, the, the, the piece you... The piece I played? Yeah. Chanson de like Saint-Jacques. Jacques yeah. was James, Saint okay. James. Saint James, yeah. And there's a, there's a pilgrimage in Europe. Uh-huh. Like Apostello, you, you mart, you pilgrimage, and this is one of the roots. Okay. So people would sing this song en route on their pilgrimage right. to Spain from France. It was probably a well-known carol at Christmas time to the French okay. people. So why did you choose uh, this song? Well, when you approached me, Bruce, I know what your show is like, right? Yeah. You're always mixing things up. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and this repertoire from the French repertoire, very old uh, Louis XIV, it was court music. The French people wrote down what each little vignette that I play was supposed to sound like. Okay. And other, other cultures didn't do that. Right. For example, Bach wrote all kinds of music and he never told the player what it was supposed to be. Oh. Just on a few occasions he'd say organ, no, play, no, which meant everything. But that's why Bach can survive all different right, kinds right. of music. The French people wrote down what the recipe was for this particular uh -huh. piece right here. So I'll put it together for us. It says on the positive, I have to have a bourdon, French sounding right. names, Preston, <laughs> plein jeu, and I've got this, or a symbol, which is even a smaller one. So I've got, yeah. I've got my basses. Yeah. I have a trompette, but I don't have a clarion. I'd have to have a bigger organ. That's oh, another true. reed. And reeds are expensive to make. That's why <laughs> organs, course. pipe organs, yeah. Yeah. don't go for the reeds. And then it calls for flutes, eight and four in the pedal. And I've got them too. So, so it's kind of like a recipe. It's a recipe and it sounds like this at the end of the day. And this would be, this is the mutation thing that's going on, you build it up. So it's a different drink altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. Where, where, where's the ice? <laughs> I guess it'd be the doublet, this little squeaker up okay. here. <laughs> so how, you, how old is this? Uh, this Oregon? is a special year, 1972, we're coming 72. up to 50 years wow. ago this wow. went, went in. All right, give us a power chord. A power chord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> give us a power chord, Brad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very nice. Brad, I want to Hello. give you this. It's Christmas. Mm. I don't know, are you a rum drinker? You bet. All oh, right. Awesome. You can have rum and eggnog, <laughs> right? El Dorado. Yeah. It's a no. very nice. Uh, it's a very nice rum. You're going to enjoy it. Oh, I bet you I will. Yeah. Oh yes, awesome. that's a treat. Good. Such a treat. Thank you so much. Man, that was awesome. <laughs> Let's go make a drink. Come on. Oh man, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> it's cold out there, and I think we should make something nice and warm to warm our souls and something Christmassy, okay? But first, I'd like to change into something more comfortable. Be right back. Oh, that's better. <laughs> so I thought we'd make something warm, something I call a Christmas mocha bomb, yeah.
We're gonna start by making some hot coffee. I got my beans right here. It's looking good. I'm just using a, a medium dark roast. You could use any coffee you like. Um, just make it fresh, because fresh always tastes better. These are organic uh, coffee beans, and they're lovely. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> okay. Actually, you know what? That's gonna be about right. Just like that. Yeah, it is. Beauty. Okay, let's get some coffee going, some water, hot water. And in the meantime, we're going to prep our balls. <laughs> Christmas balls. <laughs> Hot chocolate bombs. Um, I've got dark ones, I've got milk chocolate, and I've got a, a white chocolate, milk chocolate combo. And they're all filled with marshmallows. You can get these online, of course, any specialty shop, really. Or you can make them yourself. That would even be better. <laughs> but uh, I didn't have time to make them this year. <laughs> so. What we're going to do, slide that down here, and we're going to get our coffee to, uh, oh yeah, brewing our coffee here. That's about all we need. Okay, we'll just let that steep a little bit. In the meantime, which one should I choose? Oh, oh, I think I'll choose this one. So, what we're going to do, <laughs> is um, we're going to put a little hole in, in this uh, chocolate bomb with my trusty uh, wine opener. This guy had a lot of miles on this thing at work, I'll tell you. Just got to be real careful. I like opening a bottle of wine, but not really. <laughs> So we got a little hole there now. We take our knife and we just make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So what I've discovered is a lot of times um, the bombs leak, right? We've got our hole there ready to go with our alcohol. But what I like to do is take some melted chocolate and kind of go over the seams a bit, you know, like something like that, right? And you can pop this in your fridge for 10 minutes or so and let it set. All right, check this out. I've got the bottom all sealed up. I'm gonna pop this in my uh, fridge or my freezer for like uh, 10 minutes and I'll see you then. While you're waiting, let's throw to a clip. Okay, <laughs> moving on. The easiest way is to just use a little shot glass. That just helps with stability, right? And so we're gonna just pop our little funnel in there. Oh, <laughs> and we need some brandy. Marquis de Villard. I like this brandy, actually. Now these bombs are about uh, an ounce and a half. Um, 45 mil, I guess, right? We're gonna use one ounce of brandy. Why brandy? Well, brandy <laughs> is pretty much the only thing that's gonna warm your blood. Um, you know, you got those little St. Bernards there with the little casks around their neck. Well, that's filled with brandy, right? Okay, um, you know, you could use, <laughs> you could use rum, that would work. Uh, this, is, this recipe is really flexible. Uh, you could use uh, bourbon. Bourbon would be awesome, <laughs> for sure. Um, you could use scotch. <laughs> scotch would make it really explosive. One ounce. And hopefully I got enough chocolate there that it doesn't leak. We're looking good. Good looking. Okay. Green chartreuse. I thought I'd introduce a few herbal notes. And I'm going to go with 
a quarter ounce, okay? One quarter ounce. Beautiful. Nice. Next, let's make it Christmassy. <laughs> With little peppermint schnapps, okay? Peppermint schnapps. And we'll just go with, oh, I don't know, uh, a teaspoon. Yeah, I missed a little bit. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. And we just want to seal this up, seal our little hole with a little bit more chocolate. And what you're going to find is the alcohol actually disintegrates to the marshmallows. But that's okay, because the real bomb is what's inside. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this back in the freezer. Let's see what clip Aaron has found now. Okay, we're just gonna heat our glass. Isn't this a lovely festive glass? Check him out, awesome. I mean, you could use your favorite mug, whatever, you know. But I thought this was like perfect for, <laughs> for Christmas. Let's get rid of some of these uh, coffee grounds from the top. Doesn't seem too much actually. Okay, I've got my hot water <laughs> heating up my glass. I got my coffee ready, ready to pour. We're gonna drop our boozy bomb into our glass. <laughs> We're gonna pour our hot coffee over top about, about a cup, okay? I'm looking for about a cup, which is about there. Ah, yeah, yum. <laughs> and over time, that is just going to, oh yeah, it's gonna open up releasing all that chocolate, releasing all, oh, I can smell the chartreuse actually. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Well, as you can see, the marshmallows did their thing. Now, if you were to prep these ahead of time, uh, the alcohol might disintegrate the uh, marshmallows. They probably will. What goes great with marshmallows? Hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking whipped cream. Now, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I didn't make my own homemade. This is a uh, real whipped cream, supposedly. <laughs> At least it says it on the label. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pop in some whipped cream on top of those marshmallows. Whoa! First time ever, I bet. Oh, who doesn't like whipped cream? <laughs> Late night parties with whipped cream. Whoa. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> ah, I was just thinking of the 70s. I'm going to top the whipped cream with some amarula. Amarula. Um, it's kind of like a Bailey's, of course. It's a cream liqueur. About an ounce, okay? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. And the final touch, we're just gonna top it with a little bit of nutmeg. Oh, it's Christmas in a glass. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> it's beautiful. And there you have it, the Christmas mocha bomb. Um, I love the way it's layering. So, you know, we got our chocolate on the bottom. We got this milk chocolatey kind of, and it's gonna be a little darker with the coffee. You got, ooh, ooh, we got the uh, marshmallows. We got the whipped cream. What do you do next? <laughs> Stir it up. Incorporate all this goodness, all this decadence for sure. Oh my God. Oh, and give it a go. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm.
mm, coffee, chocolate. I'm getting these wonderful herbal notes from the green chartreuse for sure. Just a little bit of mint from the uh, peppermint schnapps. That's beautiful. Oh my God. If this doesn't warm me up, I don't know what will. So just to uh, conclude here, you make these in advance. <laughs> and you, you don't have to play bartender. You just, <laughs> look at all these bombs. <laughs> you, just, you just make these ahead of time, keep them in your fridge, make sure they're sealed so they don't leak. How fun is this? I mean, you got all these bombs sitting in front of you. You make them in advance. It's just, it's just pure pleasure. What else you gotta do? Do something different, you know? This will definitely impress your guests when they come over for a visit, all right? In the meantime, I think I'm gonna just uh, sit on a couch somewhere and, <laughs> and enjoy this mocha bomb, my Christmas mocha bomb. It's even fun to say, Christmas mocha bomb. Okay, what's next? I'm gonna make something special for you. Um, I call it reindeer cinnamon... Cinnamon reindeer balls. Yeah, <laughs> perfect for Christmas. We're kind of making it up as we go along here, guys. Okay, so we're gonna start with Disarano Amaretto. We're gonna layer a little bit of fireball whiskey over top. So take your time. Now time for the balls to drop. I've got some Advocat here, and we're just gonna drop this in. Boink. It's gonna sit in between the Amaretto and the Fireball Whiskey. Oh yeah, look at that ball drop. How many balls? Man, you got balls. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Your nose, yeah Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimo man I was singing it was fun it was alive it was it's Christmas well you shouldn't really say Eskimo anymore it's, why not well it's not correct it's um it's Inuit that's the uh, proper term Inuit Inuit but that's was the way it was written way back I know but Inuit really it's all about the chestnuts chestnuts yeah chestnuts yeah roasting chestnuts so we can make a chestnut syrup ha for cocktails <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going back to bed. Oh, come on. Come on. Party pooper. It wouldn't be Christmas without chestnuts. <laughs> and I got lots of chestnuts. Look at these suckers. Yeah, I got lots. 
Yeah. I'm not sure what the type of chestnuts, because there's like, I don't know, there's a few varieties of chestnuts out there, but what you want to look for in a chestnut is you want it pretty firm when you go shopping for chestnuts. Yeah, that's, there's a beauty right there. If they've got, you know, little holes in them, you know, uh, the insects have been at them. So you got to be careful with that. But yeah, these are actually pretty damn nice chestnuts. Anyway, I'm looking for like 400 grams here. And that's going to be about, oh, anywhere from 18 to 25 chestnuts. Glasses. Oh yeah, 345. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our chestnuts. And what we want to do is score them. And there's a few different ways of doing it. Personally, I just like to cut them. Just cut them like that. That's a little dangerous. <laughs> but so is Christmas shopping. Oh my God. <laughs> and just give that a little squeeze, see that? Yeah, it looks like a little Pac-Man, doesn't it? <laughs> the other method uh, I've seen is to just do a cross on top. Personally, I don't think that works as well. Um, it, um, it works, but I think this method is a little better, okay? We're gonna score all these, and uh, it'll uh, take a few minutes here. <laughs> so go pour yourself a drink. No, no, no. Actually, what you wanna do once you've scored all these is you wanna soak the chestnuts for like two hours. And through the magic of Christmas, here they are, ready to go. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> And you know, I guess you could um, speed the process up. Um, maybe if you used uh, like hot water, you might take an hour, right? Or <laughs> you could buy all ready to go uh, chestnuts in a bag. <laughs> but I, I tell you, these fresh chestnuts taste better than these. These are just kind of cool for snacking on. It may be a garnish, who knows? So the reason we're soaking these um, is it keeps the chestnuts moist. It becomes easier to peel them off uh, later on. So that's basically it. So what we want to do now is uh, get them ready for the oven. <laughs> I would love to roast uh, them on an open fire. <laughs> of course I would, <laughs> but I haven't got an open fire right now so what we want to do is we want to uh, just put them in our baking pan here and we want the uh, the cut side up like little soldiers I don't think it's necessary to dry them off because you know I mean it's all gonna get dried off in the oven isn't it right that's beautiful look at these look at these guys two more there we go all right Okay, I'm just gonna take these upstairs and I'm gonna pop them in the oven, um, 400 degrees for uh, about a half an hour. So I'll see you then. Oh, <laughs> almost forgot my drink. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at these babies, yeah, nice and roasted. So all you want to do now is um, crack them open. You, you got to let them cool a little bit so you can handle them, right? I don't know how hot hot is. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, perfect. Oh, beauty. In the pot it goes, ha! Ah! Let's continue cracking. Man, those are hot. <laughs> but you want to peel these things while they're hot because they're just a hair too hot. <laughs> you want to peel them while they're hot because the shell and the husk will uh, come off much easier. Just letting you know. You know, when I was a kid, that was long before 
the internet, you had to kind of amuse yourself, right? <laughs> and we we would uh, we would collect chestnuts from the neighborhood and put them on a string, right? It was funny because it was it was a game. So all the neighborhood kids would have their chestnuts on a string, right? And you'd polish them up, right? And basically, you put a chestnut down, and the other guy just whacks it with his chestnut. And if he cracks it and breaks it, then you get to choose one of his chestnuts off his uh, string of chestnuts. It was a fun game. And, it, and what was more ridiculous was it was my older brother, Terry. He took me down to dad's workshop there and he, he said, well, huh, let's shellac them. <laughs> <laughs> so we had these shiny chestnuts. All the kids had shiny chestnuts, but ours were a little shinier with the, the shellac on them. And sometimes we even froze them. Oh my God. So you, you, you know, you got your string of chestnuts, you got them in the freezer, you bring them out and you go whack and you kill the other guy's uh, chestnut and they don't even know why. <laughs> That's so wrong, but it was fun. It was fun back then. Oh my God, it was so much fun. Anyway, did you know the oldest chestnut tree in the world grows on an active volcano? The 100 horse chestnut is the largest, oldest known chestnut tree in the world. It's between 2,000 and 4,000 years old. And when it was measured in 1780, it had a circumference of 190 feet or about 58 meters. The tree sits on the eastern slope of Mount Etna, just eight kilometers from the Sicilian volcano's crater. Now you know. There's our last one. If you don't get all the husks, it's okay because it's a syrup, right? First thing we need is some fire. Whoa, yeah. And we just want to bring it to a, I guess a medium, medium heat. And we got some butter. <laughs> Why? Because everything tastes better with butter. <laughs> I'm going for like a, a half a tablespoon of some butter. Yeah. You want to let all that butter melt in there. You know what? I'm going to add some more butter. <laughs> Shut up. Eh, I'm just like cooking on the fly, guys. Cooking on the fly. But typically it's like a, a half a tablespoon. Of butter and you notice like some are whole and some are chopped and that's okay you you know if you're gonna do this and they all come out whole then just rough chop them so they're fairly chunky right because chestnuts will absorb actually oh yeah they're roasting up real nice Getting a nice little caramelization going on those. Next is rosemary. Got a wonderful little sprig here. I'm just going for the, the needles. Right, we're gonna throw that in there. Mmm, rosemary. I can smell that. Rosemary and butter. Beauty. Next is a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. Followed by a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Beautiful. Honey is next. I've got a quarter cup or 60 mil. Oh yeah, honey. Honey pie, yeah. You are driving me crazy. Cause it's Christmas time, yeah. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, oh. The smell is absolutely fabulous. Man, this is good. We need a, like a, just a, 
a pinch of sea salt. Good pinch there. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Keep stirring. You want to keep stirring so you don't burn these puppies. To this mix, we're going to add a cup and a half of water. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. We're going to bring it back to a boil while we're waiting on that. <laughs> I'm going to eat some more chestnuts. Mm. What we want to do now, uh, just bring our heat down and uh, simmer for five minutes. Yeah, a gentle simmer. Oh yeah, look at that. That is beautiful, man. And do I dare say, uh, throw it to another clip? Okay, it's been five minutes and this is smelling and looking absolutely divine. I think what we do now is turn our heat off, pop her on a hot plate here, pop a lid on and let it steep and cool slightly. See you in a few more minutes. Did you know the uh, chestnut is the only nut that contains vitamin C? A 30 gram serving provides 20% of our recommended daily intake. Chestnuts are also a great source of potassium as well as minerals such as iron, calcium, magnesium, manganese, uh, phosphorus and zinc. They also contain uh, B vitamins and are low in fat. So why wouldn't you roast up some chestnuts? Now that it's slightly cooled, we're going to add some brandy, uh, about an ounce. Perfect. Give it a little bit of a stir. Oh yeah. And let's strain it out. Oh, look at the color. It's chestnuty. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, there goes one. There goes two. There goes three. It's all good. It's all good because it's all about the chestnut and I get to eat this puppy. Ha! Mmm! So it looks like we got a cup. So we had a cup and a half of water and now we've reduced it to one cup. So let's bottle it. Yeah, baby. Actually, you know, I think we should strain it one more time, just because. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, freaking awesome, man. Yeah, baby. We've got a cup of chestnut syrup. Chestnuts are roasting on an open fire. Well, we didn't have a fire, but uh, you know what? I guess I'm going to have to try this. Lovely chestnut color, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's try some of this. Uh, nutty. Uh, spice is coming through real nice. Even the rosemary is poking its head through. Ah, it's beautiful. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, you'll probably get about a month in the fridge uh, with this. Um, and what I've discovered is over the next couple days, the flavors just seem to meld and just come together. Like, wow, yeah. It's not like a thick syrup but uh, it's going to be marvelous in a cocktail I'm going to make for you. <laughs> so keep watching.
Something I want to tell you, you know. It was back in 1823, the Troy Sentinel published the poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, commonly known as Twas the Night Before Christmas. The poem featured eight flying reindeer pulling Santa's sleigh. And for the first time, they were identified by name. You know Dasher and Dancer, uh, Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid, Donder and Blitzen. And of course, Rudolph, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, he began guiding Santa's sleigh in 1939, when Robert L. May wrote the story of the, the most famous reindeer of all as a Christmas coloring book for his employer, the Chicago-based department store, Montgomery Ward. The company gave away the coloring books as holiday gifts to children to entice their parents to visit and shop at the store. In the first year of publication, 2.4 million copies of Rudolph's story were distributed by Montgomery Ward. But before settling on the name Rudolph, Robert May considered two other names for his red-nosed reindeer. Rollo and Reginald. <laughs> Reggie. <laughs> Reggie the red-nosed reindeer. <laughs> I think Rudolph was a better choice, you know. Now May's brother-in-law, songwriter Johnny Marks, decided to adapt the story of Rudolph into song. Marks' musical version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was recorded by Gene Autry in 1949. Now you know. <laughs> One more tidbit of information about reindeer is that both male and female reindeer grow antlers in the summer each year. Male reindeer drop their antlers at the beginning of winter, usually late November to mid-December. Female reindeer retain their antlers till after they give birth in the spring. So what does that tell you? <laughs> every historical rendition depicting Santa's reindeer, every single one of them, from Rudolph to Blitzen, had to be a girl to have those antlers on Christmas Eve. Well, that was magical, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, I've got this wonderful chestnut syrup. It's almost like a Norjat, you know? Uh, but it tastes so delightful. And as you can see, it's kind of going down. <laughs> I thought, we would make my world famous, no, it's not famous at all. Maybe it will be though. My world famous chestnut tumbler. Yeah, let's do it. Now we could make this drink. Uh, heck, we got a lot of options here. Um, you know, cognac would go really nice, definitely. Definitely. Um, rum, you know, rum would be amazing in this drink. Any of your uh, bourbons would work. Um, even a, a straight rye whiskey would be awesome. Um, geez, I don't know. This is a tough call. This is a tough call. Oh, what's this? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, Forty Creek, why not? <laughs> it's just sitting there, thanks Santa. <laughs> it's one of my favorite uh, Canadian uh, whiskeys. I'm gonna go with uh, two ounces in our mixing glass. Yeah. And you'll have to shake this up occasionally because it will settle as time goes on. One ounce of our fabulous Chestnut syrup, yeah. And Angostura bitters. It's kind of shaping up to be like a little riff on a Manhattan, <laughs> isn't it? A couple dashes. Perfect. So all we want to do is uh, fill up our mixing glass with a little bit of ice. Yeah. Give it a good stir here. Getting nice and chilled. A little bit of dilution. That's actually pretty good. We need a festive glass. <laughs> um, 
what is this? This is a um, ice ball. Ice ball. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Ball of ice. <laughs> Line. <laughs> ice ball. A frozen ball of water. <laughs> I have this wonderful frozen ball of water. An ice ball. <laughs> In our glass we go. Beautiful. And we're just going to strain this out. Yeah. Strain her out. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the color. It's beginning to look a lot like. Christmas. Okay, I'm not done. Ha, ha, I've got this wonderful orange here, and what we're gonna do is flame a nice piece of orange rind. Just warm it up a bit here. Yeah, get those oils all nice and toasty. And the final touch, <laughs> I put in a little atomizer here. Um, can you guess what it is? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, uh, <laughs> what did you say? Acid. Absent. Oh, absent. <laughs> Acid? <laughs> absent, what was your guess, Aaron? Banaka. Banaka? Banaka? Banacula. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, I'm using uh, Cafe Fresco. This is a wonderful product uh, by uh, Last Straw Distilleries, uh, close to where I live. And I like it because it's not sweet. If you can find this, I mean, this is made with uh, espresso beans, so there's a real a punch going on here. Um, if you can't find this, you can use Kahlua, of course you can, Tia Maria, that kind of thing. But I like this because it's a fine product. <laughs> Just a one good spritz. Two. <laughs> oh, so I get, I get the orange, the burnt orange, and the coffee right off the bat. That's delicious. This is so smooth. I get the nuttiness from the chestnut syrup. The orange is there. More on the, uh, on the aroma than the taste. I get a little bit in the taste. You know you're drinking whiskey, but it has just been tamed down so much by our chestnut syrup. I think what I like about this is the chestnut syrup wasn't that sweet uh, when we made it. So the drink isn't overly sweet by any means. A riff on a Manhattan, or uh, a riff on an old fashioned, <laughs> a riff on a Brooklyn. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Uh, what I do know is uh, it's delightful and is perfect for Christmas time. Well, folks, that's our show for this year. I hope you enjoyed it. Wait, 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 and wait, 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 sorry, what? wait, don't finish. What? Wait, 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 wait. What? Aaron and I got you something for Christmas. Awesome. Christmas. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh my God, that's awesome. Ah, I didn't expect this. Well, Bruce, since you were so gracious enough to pop by our place at one in the morning. Unannounced. Mm -hmm, we got you a little gift. What, what the hell? What the hell? Oh my God. What the hell? Oh, what the f Jesus, what are you doing to me? Elf P? What the hell is Elf P? What the hell, man? This doesn't even make any sense. It's Christmas magic, Bruce. At least for us. You can take your magic and shove it up your ass. See? Christmas magic, Bruce. Oh, great. Well, I guess we're doing this uh, 
What the hell goes in LP anyway? No, oh, I got you covered there too. <laughs> Why'd you guys just make this up or what? Oh, I wanted to write it on a paper towel. What no. the hell, man? Uh... Well, as far as I can tell, it's a, a waste of good ice. <laughs> Good enough. And it calls for creme de menthe. Creme de menthe white, actually. Where are you? Um, oh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Great. Um, equal portions, apparently. <laughs> Liqueur 43. That's our uh, vanilla. I guess that's the pea color, isn't it? I mean, together that might taste just okay, you know? But then, this is where it goes south, man. Uh, it calls for vinegar. Oh, sh I think I put too much in there. All right. Ah, <laughs> oh, sh man. Stir it up. <laughs> oh, do you make this up or what? No. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, oh, sh it. I'm never coming to your place ever again. That was our intention. <laughs> All right, get her nice and chilled. <laughs> ah, Swap that out for that. Christmas magic. All right, strain it out. Ooh, there it is. Should we let it on fire? <laughs> nah, we don't want you burning any of that vinegar up. <laughs> all right. Ah, yeah, it's all about Christ at Christmas time. <laughs> ah, actually, it smells okay. I'm getting the mint. The mint is overpowering, which is nice. It might cut through that uh, vinegar. All right, here we go. All right, man, here we are. Ah, oh. oh. actually, thank God for the mint. Oh my God, actually that's not bad. <laughs> well, it's not great. It's not, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but don't make this. Uh, can you turn me back to, uh, you know, where we were? Please. Sorry, Bruce. We're all out of Christmas magic. Oh. <laughs> There's that guy again. You know, it's been a tough year again for many. What with everything going on in the world today. And whether you believe it or not, there is Christmas magic all around us. All you gotta do is grab onto it. <laughs> oh, I know some of us have been put through the ringer this year. Maybe your health isn't the best it should be, or maybe you lost your job, or even worse, <laughs> a loved one. But don't give up hope. I think the most important thing we can do is to be kind to one another and be grateful for everything in our lives. Wishing you and yours a wonderful holiday season and the brightest new year. Cheers. Play me out, Brad. <laughs>
Here we go. Oh, left foot yellow. Uh, left hand green. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that was in the center. One more time. Oh. Uh. Right hand red. Huh. Well, this isn't very much fun all by myself. Hey guys, you need to you need to play here. Guys, wake up. Let's play Twister. Come on. I traveled from the North Pole to get here, man. Twister, come on. You gonna play or what? Booty oh, wanna play? You wanna play? Here. There you go. Left foot. Oh, left, right foot. Right foot red. Yeah, right foot red. Thanks for watching. You know, if you want to give me a little Christmas present, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button. That'd be great. <laughs> or check out the 12 Shots of Christmas or any of my other Christmas cocktails. Anyway, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a grand time.